All right, um, in this video, we're going to look at uh, the uh, orthogonality of Purcell functions. Um, so, uh, Purcell functions are orthogonal in the interval uh, 0 to 1 with respect to the weight function t. Um, the theorem that uh, specifies this uh, says that if alpha and beta are roots of uh, this equation here so alpha and beta are zeros of uh, your Purcell function then the integral of t j n of alpha t times j n of beta t uh, dt is zero whenever these uh, roots uh, or zeros are not equal and uh, this is one half j uh, n plus one squared of alpha if the two roots are equal now this is an important uh, property of Purcell functions because it means uh, whenever the um, your functions are orthogonal it means then we are in a position to uh, use them to expand other functions in this case in Purcell function series Okay, otherwise, uh, if the orthogonality property is not there, then uh, you find that our functions are not going to be very much uh, useful to us. Now, so let's just explain uh, what this means, uh, and then we're going to uh, prove the first part of uh, this theorem. So just uh, looking at the graphs of uh, the first few Bessel functions, um, so here we go. Um, so we're going to focus on the uh, graph on the left hand side so let's take um, your graph of j1 which is this one here okay so you can see that uh, there are a few uh, zeros uh, there is one here around four and uh, there is one here around uh, uh, six uh, now that's around seven and there's going to be our, our one there around uh, uh, 10.1 or something um, Let's call them uh, suppose we call this one alpha 1 This one alpha 2 this one alpha 3 So what that theorem is uh, stating is that uh, j1 uh, of alpha 1 t will be orthogonal to j1 of alpha 2 t and uh, also uh, those will be orthogonal to j1 of alpha 3 t so this set of functions is going to be an orthogonal set of functions where the alphas are the zeros of j1 and then um, then you can formulate uh, similarly an orthogonal set uh, of functions from the j2 using the roots of j2 okay so that's uh, what the that theorem is uh, um, stating so we're going to prove now go on we're going to go on and prove uh, the first bit um, that uh, if alpha is not equal to beta when these two roots are different then this integral is going to be zero so let's uh, see how that goes so proof uh, we're going to look at the case alpha is not equal to beta okay so we're going to start um um, so we're going to start uh, by letting u be jn of alpha t. We're going to let v be jn of beta t for brevity. Okay. Uh, then these two will satisfy the Bessel differential equation. Each one of them. So we're going to have t squared u double prime plus t u prime plus alpha squared t squared minus n squared u is equal to zero. OK, 
Okay, so that's the equation for um, this function u. And then we're going to have a similar equation for v, t squared v double prime plus t uh, v prime. And then this time we're going to have beta squared minus n squared v is equal to 0. Um, then <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the first one uh, by v over t. We're going to multiply the second one by u over t. Okay, so when we do that, um, the first one is going to be equal to t uh, u double prime v uh, plus u prime v uh, plus um alpha squared minus n squared over t squared uh, then this is going to be multiplied by t u v the second equation is going to be t u v double prime plus u v prime and then this is going to be plus beta squared uh, minus uh, n squared over t squared times t u v. All right. Um, then we are going to subtract these two equations. So if we subtract the second one from the first, uh, then we're going to get t into u double prime v minus u v double prime the second set of terms um, this is plus here the second set of terms is going to give us u prime v minus u v prime and then what's going to happen with the last term is that uh, these are going to be identical. So these terms involving n squared over t squared are going to cancel out. So here we're just going to have alpha squared minus b squared t u v, and then this is equal to zero, okay? And then these first two terms, we can compress them into one term because they happen uh, to be the um, derivative of this product here. So um, if you have uh, t uh, uh, times u prime v minus u v prime, then the derivative of that is going to give us these first two terms because uh, by the product rule, if you differentiate this and keep this fixed, you get this term here. Then if you keep t fixed, differentiate this, you're going to get this. Notice that the terms involving u prime v prime are going to cancel out because this is a difference. Okay, so we're going to get u prime v prime here and then minus u prime v prime here. So you just get the, the two terms involving the second order derivatives. Then we're going to take uh, this term to the right hand side. So beta squared minus alpha squared T U V. What we're going to do now is we're going to integrate um, between zero and one. We're going to integrate from zero to one. So notice that this is an exact derivative. So if we integrate it, we're just going to get uh, the stuff inside the brackets. So when we, the square brackets, so when we do that, this is going to be t into u prime v minus u v prime between 0 and 1. And then on the right hand side, we're going to get beta squared minus alpha squared into the integral from 0 to 1 t u v uh, dt um, 
when we evaluate on the left hand side okay so at uh, the lower end of the limit this is going to be zero because of the t there at the end t equals to one this is going to be zero again because remember u is equal to jn of alpha t so if you plug in t is equal to zero here is going to be jn of alpha now alpha is a zero of jn so um and then the same thing applies with the v so the left hand side is going to be equal to zero because uh, u of one is jn of alpha but that is equal to zero because alpha is a zero of uh, the function jn similarly v of one gonna be jn of beta and that as well is going to be zero so that means uh, this left hand side is uh, equal to zero here um so we have so we have so we have uh hence we have beta squared minus alpha squared into the integral from zero to one t u v d t is equal to zero okay so this this implies that uh, either this is zero or that is zero okay now for the case where alpha is not equal to beta this is not zero so it only implies that this is equal to zero and uh, that uh, completes uh, our proof okay so um, i'm going to say here for the case um alpha is not equal to beta okay the, the this result implies that the integral only the integral can be equal to zero if this times this is equal to zero okay so for the case alpha is equal to beta uh this implies uh, that uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of t jn of alpha t times jn of beta t dt is equal to 0 and uh, that concludes the proof of part 1 okay concludes the proof of part 1 um, the second part we're going to prove uh, in the next video. Okay, thank you for watching this one. Hopefully it is uh, useful, uh, especially if it is useful, please do not forget to subscribe to support the channel. Thank you.